All right, y'all, we back. I don't know where my video keep cutting off. But um, we ended on 23. I have to explain that um, our people be put in jails and penitentiaries across America. You know, it's a prophecy. It's ain't for no reason. So now going to um, verse 32 of Deuteronomy 28. It says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. So this is explaining how during slavery times, uh, they would sell our kids. They would sell the, the sons and daughters into another you know, another plantation. And then the parents, they would be looking for them all day long. They would be, you know, they'd be wanting them all day and they don't know where their kids are going. They won't, they, they won't be able to see their kids ever again. Kids were giving away, you know, they're going to be doing the same thing they're doing, picking cotton, picking tobacco, all this stuff like that, man. So, you know, it's sad, but you know, this is the curses that happened to us because we listened to the voice of the Lord. He told us that we just had to listen to and do his commandments and we didn't do that. So this is why we're under the, you know, this is the reason why African-Americans and so-called blacks, so why we live, uh, you know, the world the way it is today. You know, this is all upon the most high's uh doing. But rightfully so because we ain't listen. Our ancient days, you know, in our past lives we didn't do that. So now we're gonna go to I believe thirty three. Yes. It says the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. This is why uh the reason why people constantly say we are oppressed. You know, we always call ourselves we are oppressed, you know, we always under everybody because it's right here. It says, uh, a nation which thou knowest not eat up and now shall be only oppressed and crushed away. You know, people came, you know, when they came and picked us up and, um, on the slave ships, we didn't know who that was. They came and picked us up and, you know, they asked no questions. It was just straight to it. We, we in slavery, you know, it was just straight to it. You know, they didn't, we didn't know them. They didn't look like us. They didn't talk like us. Spoke two different languages came from a different type of land and they came and put us up and they took us into slavery and we've been oppressed and crushed away as the word says ever since it says the fruit of thy land and the labors shall another a nation which you know not eat up everything that we've done for them we never rip you know we never got what we deserve you know every time of reparations we ain't getting that never got that and we never will it's been 400 plus years since we've been in slavery so that we never got we ain't getting that if we would have gotten we should have been had it by now ain't no way so, going from 32, we're going to go to 36. 36 is a big one right here. Verse 36, it says, The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Correlation to his, uh, right here, it says, You know, a nation which you know not, neither nor thy fathers have known. And there shall, um, so lot. And there shall serve other gods, wood and stone. Oh, I thought somebody knocked on my window. Um, this is where you get people where uh, you worship Christianity and um in Islam from. Why? Because Christianity is they worship us, uh the wood, the wooden cross, and your um your Islam and your Muslims they worship the uh the black stone, the Mecca and stuff like that. It says of the gods, of the gods of wood and stone. You know, the Christianity that's not of God. That's a different God. That's not the right God. It clearly says it right here. When we were put into slavery, they took everything away from us. Everything that we originally did, we don't do that no more. If you were put somewhere, so let's say they took me and I did uh, and I worship what I worship. So let's say um, I'm a, let's say I'm <clears throat> I'm not, but let's say I'm a Christian. Right. And I get taken. I'm put in a different land across a different country, like across the world. And I'm there in slavery for the rest of my life. And I have a child there with somebody else that's there. Let's say my child. Uh, I teach him some things, but they're, um, uh, they're beating everything out of me. So they're making me worship what they worship. Let's say they're, um, let's say they're Muslims. So, you know, they're forcing me to work for them and worship their God, which is, um, you know, their Muslim God. So every day they constantly, in, uh, trying to embed into me, you know, teaching me, trying to teach me Muslim, everything, teach me their Muhammad, you know, all of that. So then my kid, I have a kid, right? Then I die off. So let's say I'm enslaved that whole my rest of my life and I die off. And now my kid is in slavery for them. And they're teaching him um, Islam from the day he's born. So now he will always remember Islam because that's what he was raised up doing. Then my son, let's say my kid has a kid and they're teaching Islam for the day they're born. So now everybody after me works with Islam and Islam only because my Chris, uh, let's say I was a Christian, then my Christianity stuff that died off. My kids never got that from me because someone else was beating into them. So their original 
uh, their original beliefs and practices were not taught to them because we were put in slavery. And then the person who the rich people who knew it were killed, which would be me. So now my kids never knew that this is all oh, what we're supposed to be doing. Let's say that God told me to be a Christian. Right. And my kids, they're learning to be Muslims. And now everybody after me doesn't get what God told them to, to worship because we're in slavery. It's the same thing that happened to us. I know it's a kind of long explanation, but that's what happened to us. Our people came from Jerusalem and went to Africa. And then we were always, we knew the name of Yahweh and uh, Yahweh Shai because we spoke uh, Paleo Hebrew. So we came to America. These people that came and picked us up, they were speaking English. We didn't know them. We couldn't even understand them. They took us, they speak English. So now our ancestors, they had kids and their kids are taught English. And their, and then those people, kids are taught English. So now they only speak English. That Hebrew is gone. So now they only speak English. So the language is already gone now. And now the original, the original ancestors, they uh, were under um, Yahweh Shai. Then they're teaching their kids that, but then they're teaching um, their Christianity and Islam. So then the next kid, they get Christianity and Islam. Then the people who originally was under Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, they're dead now. And they know the generations are moving on. So now they're getting Christian and Islam through every generation from there on out. So now the original belief of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is gone now. That's why we worship Christianity and Muslim now because uh, our people do that because it was beaten out of us when we were in slavery. You know, you're in a different place for so long, you're going to pick up on their stuff. You know, you don't see your homeland ever again. So... This is why we worship Christianity in um in Islam. This is where it comes from, because we had to we were had to serve their gods in slavery. We were forced to do that. So now we're gonna go to let me see thirty seven. Yes, thirty seven. Another big one. And now shall become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword amongst all nations whether the Lord shall lead thee. So it says everywhere we go, we will be called a byword and a proverb. A byword and a proverb means that like. You will be called everything, every other name that is not your true names. So let's see. When we first got here, we were Negroes. You know, they got Negroes. It went to niggers, niggas. We were called uh, Afro-Americans. We were called colored for a while. Now it's African-American. Now it's moving on to black. You know, our name constantly changes all the time. This is where it comes from, because it says we come in astonishment and a proverb and a byword amongst all nations of whether the Lord shall lead thee. Everywhere we go, we'll be called everything that is of our name. You never heard nobody call us Israelites ever. They never told us our true names. This is where exactly where it comes from right here. So we're going to go to 41. 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. This is uh, 41 correlates with 32, because it said your, your sons and daughters will be given to another people. They're going to go into slavery somewhere else. 41 says that you will have sons and daughters, and, they will, and you will not have fun. You will not enjoy them. Like it says, you will not have fun with your kids. You won't live your life with your kids, because they're going to be in slavery all over somewhere else. And they're going to be in captivity. This is, the Bible correlates itself right here, 32 and 41. So we're going to go to 44. Uh, verse 44 says, he shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shalt be, the, and thou shalt be the tail. If you're lending to somebody, that means you're wealthier than them or not wealthier than them, but you know, they need you more than they need, uh, than you need them. So the lender is more, uh, wealthy because you're able to give and still have enough for yourself. So that's why white people, they, you know, they are the lenders. They the one, we got to borrow stuff from them. We got to get, we got to, we got to, <laughs> excuse me, we got to get stuff from them. We got to ask them, you know, let me get some money. You got to go to a bank. We always got to go to somebody that's higher up than us. And that's why I said they shall be the head. We should be the tail. They are the head of everything. And we are the bottom. As y'all know, we are cursed people out here. Black people, we don't, you know, we are oppressed. Like it says in verse 33, we are oppressed. We are the bottom of the bottom. And it's because we have these curses on us. It's not for no reason. Now, this is not saying that the Lord don't love us, but he clearly said, if you don't listen to my voice, all these curses will come upon you. And of course, we ain't listen because we hard-headed people. Ain't black people hard-headed? We are, as the Bible, we call, uh, the Bible calls us stiff neck people because we don't listen. We hard-headed for a reason. This is it's in our DNA not to listen. That's what we do. And that's just how our people always been. So, you know, most I had to put these curses on us to, you know, for disobedience. So, 40, uh, verse 45 says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and pursue thee. 
and overtake thee till thou be uh, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he has commanded thee. So like I said, the most high says something twice, you need to listen to what he's saying. He said, yo, he, he reminded them halfway through the curses going through him. He said, if you don't listen to my voice, everything that I'm telling you is going to happen to you. And he said it twice. You know, our people still didn't get it because clearly, as you can see, they ain't get it. Because look where we at. Look how we live and look how black people are today. Our people are like this. And these happen to us because we didn't listen. So we're going to go to verse 48. Verse 48. It says, therefore, thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck will, until he has destroyed thee. So it says we have to go to him in hunger. Everywhere you, every time you want to get something to eat, you got to get it from your enemies, your, your people that's over us, the white man and everybody else. So you want to get some food, you got to go to the grocery store, grocery store. Who owns the grocery store? The white man. If you want to go to Chick-fil-A, who owns Chick-fil-A? The white man. You want Chipotle? Who owns Chipotle? White man. Who owns Popeyes? White man. They own everything out here. You want some water? Who the company the man who probably owns this water bottle company? What's this? Great Value Purified Spring Water. White man own that. Every you know everything you want. You can't even you better go outside and get a water. That's probably the only thing you can get for free. But you know. That water costs money that you're spending or that you turn on the water. That water costs money. Who you pay that money to? The white man. They own all of that stuff, bro. They own everything. Everything we want, we got to get it from them. And it says a want of all things. You want a car, who you got to go to? You got to go to the dealership. Who owns the dealership? The white man. If you want to go to um get a driver's license, you got to go to the white man. You want to get um you know a credit card? White man. You know, it's just basic stuff. You got to get it from them because it's the curse that was, is, uh, that was put upon us. Now, the second part of this verse is the, uh, the real part or the real important part. It says he'll put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he has destroyed thee. If you look up pictures of slavery on Google, you're going to see people with uh, yokes of iron on their neck. It's going to like kind of like shackles, but they would put them on their necks. Yokes of iron is what they call. Even look up yoke of iron. You're going to see black slaves in there. Just look up on Google yoke of iron. You're going to see black slaves. This is how they controlled us. They put a yoke of, uh, uh, yoke of iron upon their neck until we were destroyed. They took us. It's a slavery. They took us there. They beat us. They made us build houses for them that we wouldn't live in. That's what it says you will build. You will the fruits of your labor. You won't. Uh, you won't reap what you sow. You know. So they're talking about we will work for them and we won't get none of that. Yoke of iron upon the neck. They have destroyed us. We are destroyed people. We are the most lost people out here. We don't know where we come from. We are so lost. We just go off of what they tell us. Every time in school where they start off with Black History, they never start past the 1600s they never tell you about africa the history of us before the 1600s they always start with slavery that is for a purpose they do that on purpose you cannot there's no way you can tell me you don't even know the history of black people before the um the 1600s you don't they never taught you that they start off with slavery every time every time every time it's for a reason because they don't want us to know what um where we come from and even then, you really can't even find this information because we were put in, uh, in slavery. They don't put that in history books. I've seen a video on, on Instagram, um, whatchamacallit, uh, video, people called RDC World, love them. They uh, they did like a, a parody, or like a little, they do like um, little um, scenes and stuff like that, like in their house and stuff. What they call, I can't even think of it, but like, they, did, they did it like in their house. And they were like, uh, they were acting like, the teacher how they teach black history month he was like oh we're gonna start off with slavery he was like oh they, they went to slavery um they had martin luther king did a march and yeah moving on to Anne frank and then he was like we're gonna move on to the holocaust and it was like wait uh that's it about black history and he was like oh wait uh rosa park said no like come on like that's literally how they teach it to us not like that exactly but that's literally like the format they teach you about slavery martin luther king rosa parks probably coretta scott king you know, Malcolm X, they don't, you know, we only get everything that's happened recently. We don't never know the past. They never teach you the history. You don't know it. I'm telling you, it's all because of this right here. So let's go to a big one right here. 49. The Lord shall bring a nation. The Lord shall bring a nation um, against thee from from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue which thou not understand. 
that last part, I tell you to not understand. This is why it says here, your people didn't know them. They came from afar and I tell you to understand. Didn't I tell you that we spoke Hebrew and they spoke English? We didn't understand them. If you're that, even to say, let's say we were African and they came from and they took us to America. They're from somewhere else and they took us to America. We didn't, we came from Africa supposedly, right? But they came from somewhere else. We didn't understand each other. As it says here, I'm telling you to not understand. We don't understand English. English is not our true language. Our true language is, uh, is Hebrew. That's our real language. It says he will send someone against you from afar. They come from far away. We came from Jeru we from Jerusalem. They came from the other side of the country. It says as swift as the eagle flyeth. What is the national bird of the country we in right now? The eagle in Rome on the Roman. I think that's not. I don't think it's on the flag or something. The Rome, like the the epitome of Rome, is the eagle. In Egypt, it's the eagle. All these nations they work together with the eagle as swift as the eagle flyeth. They came from afar, from the end of the earth. They came from the end of the earth because we were here and they were over here. Jerusalem is all on the other side and America is all on the other side. I'm telling you, bro, that you can't make this up. I'm telling you, this is in the same Bible your mama and your grandma and them got in the drawer. It's the same Bible that everybody claimed that they read or we can recite the Bible. You don't read it, though. You don't study it. Study to show that self approving to the Lord. I'm telling you, I can't make this stuff up. Verse 50. It says a nation of fierce countenance which shall which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. And slavery, they didn't care if you were old or young. You was gonna put in work. They beat you like they beat everybody else. There was nobody equal, nobody got better. Everybody else, unless you was a woman, you still got beat too, but they treated the women better because they would rape them. They raped the guys too. But you know, women they can have kids and stuff like that. But that's just the hard truth, bro. They didn't care about you as old or young. They beat you. If you didn't do what they say, you try to run off. They would cut off one of your legs, cut off your foot. You know that uh, during slavery times, they would feed our kids to uh, alligators. I forgot what it was called, but they had someone they would feed the babies to alligators for fun. Like, for fun. Like, bro, it's crazy, bro. Like, look it up. I'm telling you, bro. They treated us terrible. Disgusting. Truly disgusting what they did to us, bro. It's truly disgusting. And they got they they got their judgment coming too. But you know, the most high he had to ordain all that to happen. Now, even though, you know, even though the Lord did it, they still, you know, the people that did it to us, the Japhi and stuff, they willingly did that stuff. They weren't doing it because the Lord told them to. They did it because they wanted to. You know, the Lord said it was gonna happen, but they did it willingly. So that's why they getting their judgment too. Uh, we're gonna go to verse 54. It says, um, it says, so that the man that, wait, where am I at? 17 minutes, cool. It says, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Listen to what I just said. I'm about to read it again. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. I'm going to address the last part now. The remnant of his children, which he shall leave. What nation of people do you know for black, for not even black? I'm sorry, I gave you the answer. What nation of people do you know if the man, the father is known for leaving the kids? It's us, bro. This is where it says, this is why we have single parent, single mothers out here. This is the reason why. Because in the Bible, it says our fathers will um, leave the remnant of their children. It says, which he shall leave. This is, I'm telling you, get your Bible right now. Get the Bible that you, that your mama take to church with her, that somebody take to church with get, Crack this open and go to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 54 and read what that says. There is no other nation of people that is known worldly for leaving the kids besides us. We are head of that. We are number one. That's why people are known for. And even the first part, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. This is where you have black on black crime. We are known for black on black crime. We are known. I cannot walk down the street and another black man walk down the street and we look at each other and we don't, and we instantly don't think it's up. Like even just looking at each other, like people, like we are, our people just hate each other, bro. And it's like unless you don't nod your head or something, you know, it's instantly guard up, it off rip. It's instantly like that, bro. That's how people are. We so defensive. We evil towards ourselves. We supposed to be united. We, you know, this is what our people do. And it says towards the wife of his bosom. This is why you got baby mama drama. This is where this come from too. I'm telling you. This I'm telling this you can't make this up. The Most High said this will happen to us. 
It ain't for no reason. Why would we just hate each other? Why do we get so okay? Explain to me why would we be put in slavery for four hundred years with our with each other? We all together. We getting all getting beat. We all getting killed. Getting fed disgusting food. We were in the field together working four hundred some years. Then we come out here. We getting shot in the streets. We getting uh oppressed we don't get the same laws as other people even though they say we all equal that's cap why would we all do that and we still hate each other shouldn't we get it by now shouldn't our people get it by now that we need to cut the shit out and just unite you know that would be some powerful shit if we all just united and we just just said fuck all that and we just not taking the shit no more why haven't we done that yet that, have you ever thought about that? I know y'all have because you see what's going on in the street. Everybody got social media. You watching this, you got social media. You know, you ain't you tired of seeing another oh I live in I live in Illinois, Chicago. Every I can't turn on the news. I hate watching news because every time I turn it on, it's up oh, a little girl got killed here. Up oh, a man got killed here in this crib. Oh, uh gang activity over here. It was a um uh gang war uh down the street from my crib. It's just I'm tired of seeing that shit. Like every time I turn on the news, it's a black man getting killed. It's um Somebody got robbed. Little kids getting killed. Uh, gang wars. It's just, you know, it's so, I'm tired of that shit, bro. And I know y'all are too, bro. Like, this is, why haven't we decided to just come together and say, yo, let's stop this shit. Let's, what can we do? Ain't nobody did that yet. And this is because it's all a part of the curses, bro. Our eyes, the eyes shall be evil towards his brother. You can't make this up. We about 21 minutes. I'm going to keep going. Uh, we're going to jump to verse uh, 56. It says, The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not uh, adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for the for the delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be even towards her husband of her bosom and towards her son and towards her daughter. This is why you, that's that baby mama drama. The man even towards the woman, the woman even towards the man. Now, this is not in every household. But if you look at the majority, this is where it comes from. I said, this ain't everybody because I grew up, I was blessed to be uh, a girl with both my parents. But I know a lot, lots of people that I know, their parents don't like each other. They had a kid, you got a single mom, they paying child support. That's our people, bro. That's exactly where our people at, bro. It says, uh, towards her son, towards our daughter, this is... This is where this comes from, bro. You got single, you got not in single mothers, you got single fathers too. The mother couldn't handle being a single mother, so she gave it to the father. This is, and you know, this is where that comes from too. It goes vice versa, it goes both ways. It goes both ways, man. Goes both ways. Now we're going to go to 63. We had 22 minutes, cool. And it says, uh, and it shall come to pass that the Lord, that as the Lord rejoice over you, to do good and multiply you so the lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to naught and you should be plucked from the land whether thou go goest to possess it he's like this is saying that you know as much as the lord loves to multiply us and give us blessings all like that the lord also loves to destroy us and uh procure on us because we ain't listen to him rightfully so our people ain't listening so why would the most high be sad for putting us under curses and we ain't listen to him he's like yo don't he's like that's our father man if you don't listen to your pops, if you listen to your the person, your authority in your house, you're going to get in trouble, man. They're going to, you know, they're going to put, they're going to punish you. They're going to, yeah, they're going to punish you. They're going to put you in punishment. Probably take some, it's different how they do it. They might take something away from you, you know. For me, my parents, they would take my video games away, and that was enough for me. I love playing the game, so taking my damn game from me was enough for me. I got in line. I still probably get beat here and there if it was depending on what it was, but for the most part, I had to do was take my game away, and I got right back in line. So it says the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you not. The Lord is not all good. That can be another video. My boy Joseph went off on that. I can link that in the description. Y'all really want that, John. I probably will. I'm gonna try to find a way to do that. But um, he's not all good, bro. If he was all good, why would he send his people into slavery? Mind you this. Even, okay, you say you're Africans, right? If we Africans, we the same people. Why they ain't come help us when we was in slavery? Why the fuck they ain't say, oh, they taking out, they took our people away. Let's go help them. Let's get them out. Because they know damn well we're not the same motherfuckers, man. We two different people. Like I said, in Exodus 11 and 7, he put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. But we two different people. They not coming to save us if we not the same people. If we were the same people, them Africans would have hauled ass to America 
and fought the white man until we was slave, until we was free, unless they all would have got fucked up. You know, they would have went to the ends of the earth for your people. If your folks got, nigga, if my damn niece gets kidnapped by somebody, I'm going over there to, I'm doing whatever I can to get my damn baby back. My niece, man. I do anything for them. I do anything for my family members, man. So you telling me that Africans, we the same people, but they didn't want to come help us? Who was in the motherfucker for 400 years? They had motherfucking chances. They knew because we they took us right up at their land. It was in West Africa. They went from West Africa. They had to bring us around Africa all the way through. I know they seen them damn boats coming around. They took us all around America to go to America. You have to go because West Africa, West Africa is on uh, over there by like Egypt and shit. Well, kind of it's on like, it's on the right side. If you look on the map, like the top right side ish. They had to bring them on the boats. The boats had to come on the land, bring them all the way around, going under Africa, and come all the way up to America to end up in um, Jamestown, I believe it was, where they landed. 16, oh, 1611, something like that. I can't think, but something like that. So they already knew we was getting taken out of their land. And they would have did something if we were the same people, bro. Like I said, the Lord rejoices over that. 64. This is another reason why uh, we were put in slavery. It says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto another. And thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. Did I have not have I not stressed in this videos that if the Lord says something twice, you need to listen to what he's saying. It don't gotta be in the same lines at the back, but if you see it twice, listen to what it said. And verse. 36 and verse 64. Let's read 36 again so you can hear it. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation neither thou nor your fathers have known, and you shall serve other gods wood and stone. Listen to 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth to another, and there you shall serve other gods, which neither thou nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. He said it twice. It was worded differently, but it was said twice. You will worship other gods, wood and stone, and the, the people that will come, um, that you will have to serve, you, you you nor your fathers have known. Our people have been scattered. Israel was scattered across the world. This is why uh, Judites, we were uh, black people, you know, so-called blacks, we were sent to America. Then you had your Levites, your Haitians. They were sent to Haiti. It's called Haiti. They're not Haitians. They're Levites. But it was called Haiti. And then your Benjamites, your West, uh, your West, uh, I forgot what it's called, but your West Indians, not West Indians, um, your, uh, your Benjamites are your Jamaicans. There was a Jamaica. You got your, um, you got Reuben, those are, um, your Seminole Indians. America, they came to America. But then they were sent off somewhere else. Like I said, our people, they were sent off, scattered. Like I said, they were scattered abroad from one end of the earth to the other, bro. Our people are scattered everywhere, bro. And it says, you will serve other gods, wood and stone. Didn't we not just teach uh, in 36 talking about um, Christianity and Islam, wood and stone, wood and cross, the black stone? I'm telling you, bro, it's a correlation to everything, bro. Correlation to everything, bro. All right. So we got, I think...